Hey, this is the Chuck Bryant show. You know, that crazy uh, computer guy, interview guy. Yeah, you know the one. Um, today, we're going to be asking these guys the hard question. That's right. They may need to go get a tissue before they have an issue and any other issue that may have. Are you ready for this? On the video chat with us today are three upcoming artists. Um, I've been told that they're climbing the charts. Um, they are a brother trio. Is that correct, guys? Correct. And um, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves where we don't mess up or tangle up anybody. But go ahead and tell us from, from right to left who you are. Uh, I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. Jacob. And we are the, the Shire, Shire Brothers. Brothers. Hey, man, that almost sounded like a song right there. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Well, tell us a little bit about the Shirey Brothers. Yeah, okay. So we actually, we grew up singing Southern Gospel our whole lives. We traveled with our, our family ministry, Royal City. And about nine years ago, uh, we all came off the road to start families and careers. And then about two years ago, uh, it actually started with Jake down here. He came to me and Josh and said, you know, I just really feel like God's calling me back into ministry. Well, that was great. God told him that, but... He hadn't told us that yet. So we took some time. We prayed about it. And, you know, we tried a couple things to make sure that um, we all felt like we we're doing it for the right reasons. And about a year and a half ago, we established ourselves and the rest has been a blur. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. OK, um, so how did y'all how did y'all start? Where did y'all get started at? Well, we got started in Cookville, Tennessee. And how we got started is he just came to us and asked us if we wanted to sing again. And so we decided to try it out. I got us a few bookings and it felt great again. It really did. And so um, we had a lot of friends and family supporting us and telling us that it'd be a waste for us not to do this. So we gave it a try and um, we've been having fun ever since. And we actually, when we started, we, um, Jake was baritone. Josh was lead and I was tenor. Now, Josh is tenor, I'm baritone, and Jake's lead. So in this year and a half, we've done a lot. Of, yeah, we've done a yeah, lot of yeah. experimenting, and we have changed a lot of things, but we have learned a lot about ministry, about the business side of things, how that works, and also a lot about um, us as brothers. So it's been, a, it's been a cool experience. Yeah. You guys, if you stick together, it's amazing what y'all can do in the years to come. God Absolutely. has given y'all such a blessing, a blessing to be able to work together as brothers, Thank regardless you. who the lead singer is, because, you know, there's going to be yeah. a song that somebody's going to be the lead on sometime. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you never know what God's going to have you to do. I know right. that I used to watch um, growing up. You would listen to rock when I listened to rock and roll and hear heart. Annie Wilson would always be the one. But Nancy would come in and sing something and just totally throw you off. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I've seen a lot of gospel groups do that too. And let's go back to, um, second generation. You've got, you, you have Brenda Denny had Randy and you had the sister and you think that Brenda Denny done all the singing, but sometimes it was the sister that did it. Or maybe Randy came in. Yeah. So it's a blessing to have y'all here tonight. So what kind of, go ahead. Thanks for having us. I was just saying, Oh, it's, it's my great pleasure. My we great pleasure. <laughs> That we appreciate you. I appreciate y'all too. Now, where's y'all's tissues at? Because now I'm fixing to get the hard questions. Hey, Jake, you get those? We're just going to use our sleeves. I got them. <laughs> All right. There you go, guys. So, um, what's up next for you guys in the next four months before we start this crazy new year coming up? Uh, so, I mean, full tour schedule uh, coming up in November. We've got Graceland. We're singing in Graceland with. Uh, C. Walker Promotions and Singing News. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll also be at NQC for the first time. Super excited about that. Awesome. We are also in the process of recording our very first Christmas album. Cool. Yes. Yeah, we realized. Oh, sorry. We realized a lot of people. Um, we were trying to get, we're trying to stay busy in uh, November and December. And a lot of people kept telling Josh, well, if you had a Christmas um, program, we'd have you. So Josh said, hey, let's get a Christmas program together. And so we, are now celebrating uh, Christmas in August. So yes. <laughs> so you got the tracks all laid down and everything. Yep. Awesome. We already done um, two vocal days. We got one more vocal day to go. Awesome. Who's producing your album? Paul Secord. 
with uh, nice. Godsey Media. Nice guys. Nice guys. Been working with them for quite a few years. They're really good, good people. Awesome. They got it. I think, believe they got their own radio station now too. We got WOTG and Chattanooga gospel. And then we got a contemporary station, CCMA for a contemporary. And then, you know, we got a country station and stuff. So are cool. you Southern gospel or Christian country? We're actually kind of a blend of both. Yeah, really? We consider ourselves gospel because we can't pick just one. Yeah, we, awesome. have, we have yeah, we have one song that goes that starts off a little a little southern, and then the next song we hit them with another song that people go, ah, it's a little more country. And then every now and then, hey, we'll pick out, we'll just bring out the guitar and we'll play a little bit of Chain Breaker. So we'll we'll delve into the uh, contemporary world. So we're a little bit of everything. I like the way you said that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, so you got this, y'all. What's the plan for your tour in twenty twenty two? Oh, um, we're already booking for all of that. Um, I'm on the phone almost every day talking with some people about getting us in. And it's, it's honestly, it's been very encouraging because even with the season we've been in with COVID happening and everything this year, we're on pace to do a hundred, a hundred dates. And next year we'll probably be about 120 or so. I've already gotten January, February, and March almost completely full. Nice. That's really good. I mean, especially for a quartet that's only been together a year and a half. Y'all did pretty good. I'm really proud of you boys. Thank Y'all you so good. much. It's been, it's been very difficult, but we've, we've been working very hard at it. Yeah. And I'll say, I'll say one thing too, is um, it started out when we first started, uh, Josh was just calling in a lot of favors, calling pastors saying, please have a sin. Just let us, let us practice and let us um, use your congregation as, as an active audience who can kind of critique us. Uh, and then it got to where we had a few pastors reaching out to us. And now it's gotten to the point where we're still doing a lot of calls, but we're also receiving a lot of emails and calls. And we've already this year, we've been in Indiana, Ohio, um, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, South Carolina, go to North Carolina, Florida, we're going to Michigan next year. So we're really guys that we feel like guys. Next, just- next time you're in Oklahoma, get in touch with me. I'll set you up with pastor Jack. Okay. With the Pastor Jack Triple Hour, he's over there on our KOTG station. Awesome. And then we might, I might try to get you some contacts down in Texas. So, That'd be amazing. That's actually a huge goal of ours is to get in Texas. Yeah, each year, each year we set up, we all have a goal, and we make it to where you know, obviously, as a as like us together, we all want to see lives changed, and we just want to be able to be used. But we all have specific goals we want. Like Josh's goal was to get a hundred bookings. Jake's goal was to get some new microphones and our just improve our sound quality. And my goal was to go to Texas. So we all and so Yeehaw! Far, yeah, so far that goal has not been met. So that's the all one right. goal we haven't reached yet. Um, if you got a pen and paper, I'm gonna give you a couple of names that you might want to reach out to. I got you okay. right now. Look up Heather Van Buren. Heather Van Buren. She's on Facebook. She's down in the Texas area. Okay. Okay. Look at some churches down there. Look up the, um, I can't promise you that it'll get you in the door, but we have a biker church that the pastor is just phenomenal. He's one of my best friends. His, na- his name is Pastor J.R. Franklin. Okay. Okay. Those are two names right there. And they're, they're, they're the biker church from Wiley, Texas. And while he's over next to Dallas, just Very a little cool. bit. So there's you two contacts right there, brother. Well, I appreciate that. I could go see the Cowboys. <laughs> there are you. Cowboys. Are you a Cowboy fan? I love the Dallas Cowboys. All right. This interview is over with because we're all it's, here. We're all Saints fans. It really is. <laughs> hey, my brother, my brother was born in Paris and, and Texas, and he's been a Cowboy fan, but that's the reason we don't claim him no more because he's a Dallas Cowboy fan. So, you know, <laughs> it happened. I totally get that. Okay. And then there's two others. After we get in with this interview, I'll give you look up uh, Jack Mondell on Facebook. Okay. And he runs the Pastor Jack Triple Hour on KOTG Radio. And then I'll give you a name to Pastor Sharon Jones. She runs a cho- ch- uh, she runs a church in Oklahoma. 
And then I might be able to make a phone call. Don't know if this is going to help you or not, but I can probably get a hold of Lonnie Hardy. And Pastor Hardy, I know you watch our programs. If you see uh, see me giving out your information, they're from the Passion Church in uh, Brant around uh, Missouri, not Branson, but in Missouri, and they're on the WOTG radio and TV network. So tell us a little bit about each one of you. Yeah, so um, we can start with Jake. Go ahead, bud. <laughs> okay. Um, about me, let's see. Love music, obviously. You know, we're doing this now. I don't think any of us would do what we do if we didn't love music. Um, love family. Uh, I'm the one who does all the sound stuff, so I'm learning that as I go, which really, really enjoying that. I wish really? I knew sound. The best thing I know how to turn the volume up. That's it. I mean, I'm pretty good with a soundboard here, but I couldn't, I don't have an ear for sound. I can't, I can't sing. If I try to sing, God says, can you turn his microphone down, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you, Jake, Jake's a little modest, but Jake's also an incredible drummer. Uh, and he's also, he's been married and has uh, three kids. So, and then you've got. He me. doesn't look like a day over 21. Hey, listen, we are. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are a lot uh, older than we look. Well, I th- we're, we're not that much older than we look, but we're pretty, yeah, we're older than we look. But I actually, so um, full time, uh, I actually work in a school system. I work with a special education department here in DeKalb County, Tennessee. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And um, my hat's I, off to you. My hat's off to you. I appreciate that. But I actually grew a beard because I used to work in the um, high school. And when I did, was clean shaven, I used to get in trouble for walking down the halls because they thought I was skipping class. So I had to finally grow a beard and say, look, I'm a teacher. I work here. Um, and they go, but, sure you do. Let's go to the principal's <laughs> office. <laughs> but um, I'm actually, I'm married. Um, I have two children. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think anything else interesting about me. Uh, as far as the ministry goes, I take care of um, everything business. Right. I make sure things are paid for. I make sure that we um, have a have a good schedule of where we're going when we go somewhere. And then, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm not that interesting. So I didn't get that. And, Did and Siri didn't understand either. So <laughs> Siri says, I get that. I get that. Yeah. What about you, brother? My name is Josh. Um, I, I have a wife. I've been married for almost two years now and I've got my first baby on the way. Congratulations. And let, let's, put, so let's put a little something in there. So Josh, actually they're finding out how soon are you finding out the gender? We find out. The gender, August the 31st. And listen to this. This is so, for those of you who don't know us, we, we, get, we get bored really easily. And we've all been diagnosed with ADHD. And so our trips are a lot of fun because we just, we do crazy stuff. And Josh has actually um, interested me. They're going to find out the gender and they want to do a big reveal, but they don't want to know yet. So they're giving me the envelope that has the gender of the baby. And if anyone knows me, that's like the worst idea because most oh, likely I know before they do. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I'll tell you a little story. And this pandemic started. I had one granddaughter. She was eight. I got two kids. One's thirty-four and one's twenty-seven. And uh, my daughter had AJ when she was uh, back in twenty thirteen. We had one granddaughter. We've had one granddaughter for the last eight years. And then in, in less than a year and two months, I got three. Oh, wow. wow. Got three daughter, or granddaughters and one grandson. That's Man. awesome. And I'm going to tell you right now, being a parent or being a grandfather, you know, life has its ups and downs and y'all's challenges is going to come. But just be patient with them. Just be patient and love them. Because you're going to go through the terrible twos if you've already been there. Um, and I'm going to tell you that. right now, I, my, my little granddaughter, she's a year old now. And I call her Sophie the Tornado. And when <laughs> she comes in the house, it's like the Tasmanian devil. And she's everywhere. Things flowing everywhere, you know. And our house is not baby proof because it's just me and my wife. But the next time they come... I'm getting a bumper car for her. I wish she don't have to <laughs> put that little round bubble around her. Or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. But it's, it's, it's so great to be a father. I was, I was blessed to have two great kids and, um, you know, they're out in the world now and I have to pray for them because daddy's not a daddy. Don't approve everything they do, but that's just, that's just life as being a father. 
Oh, sure. And but I'm proud of both of them because I can't say enough how proud that I am of my two and then my four grandbabies. They're so beautiful. And uh, my grand my granddaughter for the, I've seen her, her got to see her for the first time. We moved up here to Georgia from Florida in 2018, and I haven't got to see my granddaughter since she was um, four month no four three or four years old. So it's been quite a bit. So in 2016 was the last time I seen her during the summer. And my daughter says, well, daddy, she's not the same. She's not going to be the little angel that you thought she was. And I said, well, we'll just have to see. She got here. She did the same thing she did the last time in Papa's lap, hugging Papa and just loving on him. Yeah. And that's just the greatest thing there is in the world. And it's kind of like gospel music. You get that right song that everybody will remember you for. And that'll be your signature song. And I've seen it so many times. Someone will, y'all will come up with a title. And every time that you show up to a place and they'll say, hey, can you sing that certain song? And that'll be your signature song. That's what I found out with the quartets and the country, Christian country artists and stuff like that. Okay. So tell us a couple of, tell us about a couple of songs that you've all wrote here recently. Well, we haven't written any, um, but we've re- We've been blessed to be. Which taking- one? Which ones have you recorded then? <laughs> yeah, we recorded our very first single called "Testify," which That's is a great song. It's a great thank song. Thank you so much. Um, it was written by um, Jason Cox, Lee Black, and Joseph Habedank. Okay. And, um, that was our first single, and it's one of those songs. It's so powerful, but also it's so much fun for the audience and for us to. It, we really enjoy singing that one. And you literally see, like, you can feel the pressure in the room change when that song comes on. Like, it goes from it goes from just, I mean, just enjoying and just trying to get to know them to when that song comes on. I think everyone understands exactly what we're about, which I think is incredible. Yes. Okay. What's well, another one? Our latest single we recorded is called There is a God. And um, it was written by Matthew West and golly. I don't know, but it's a Phillips Craig and Dean song. Okay. Dean and um, we were sent that song and we loved it. We loved the song, but to be honest, we weren't sure how it was going to fit with us, but our producer, Scott Godsey and our um, other producer, Paul Secord had just a, an amazing vision for the song and for how they wanted us to do it. And we got in there and now it's just like, we don't see how we, we put on a concert or had a service without that song in the program, because it's just one of those huge moments um, that we really present to the audience and talk about a song that's powerful and moves people. You can look out in the audience and you can just see tears, like people just in tears, like <clears throat> just about how, how it reassuring it is knowing that there is a God and he's got a perfect plan for all of us. And then you have those few, you have those few people in the audience who don't want to be moved. And then Jake's got a voice that makes like, like his voice, like whispers in your ear, you're going to move because he's got such a powerful voice. And it's very, it's very, it's very, uh, I don't know what you say. Soulful. Very soulful, but it's also very powerful. So there's, there's parts in the song where it's one of those, like you can't help, you can't help but feel the song, which is the whole goal is when we have a song sent to us that ministers to us, then our job is how can we make sure that people understand how it makes us feel? And Jake does an incredible job at that. Which I mean, that that's become a unique thing with recording songs and singing songs. I mean, we started out with, you know, we want to make sure this sounds good. And we want to make sure, you know, the harmony's tight. We blend well. And it became, you know, one of those things. We now have to take this song and we have to feel the song because if I can't feel this song, then I'm not going to sell it to anyone. They're not right. going to feel it. Pretty cool. So you just got one album out right now, or how got many you got? You got two. All right, awesome. What's the name of them? We got one that our first one is um, is self titled, just Shire Brothers, and the other one is um, is titled God's Been Good. And our first one um, is one that has mostly originals. Um, the second one is a lot of cover songs, and we did that on purpose because we needed some. We had grown, and we needed another table project, just stuff that people get and we were considering naming the album moments because we wanted songs that created moments in our in our concerts and our worship services and right. so they're all songs that we just love and we feel like carried just a really powerful moment 
but uh, we titled it God's Been Good, which is the Legacy 5 song. Um, awesome. And Josh sings it, actually, but it's a, it's a good one. Nice. Really good. You know, in, in the times that y'all have on the road, as y'all just starting out, I've heard stories from some of the greatest names like Ronnie Henson and, and the Deans. You know, I've talked to a lot of them. I've been in person with them a lot. And it's great that y'all have memories because I, I can see it now. 10 years from now, you'll talk about where y'all were and how you got started. I didn't want to say, well, you know, brother, we were over here and we got started here. And, and y'all tell the stories about how your life and how the gospel music has really changed your life. And I can see that already. And I see the passion that y'all have for what you're doing for God. Don't change a thing. Don't change a thing. Don't try to change your ways. Thank you. Because if y'all starting out, it's, you know, as brothers, it's hard sometimes to work with your brothers. Yeah, but if y'all, if y'all, if y'all keep the mindset, <laughs> oh, there goes one already. <laughs> Count him down. I see it. The WWE one, two, three. <laughs> as John Cena said, it's only going to take one, two, three. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, y'all Cena fans. <laughs> Oh, we're WWE fans. Yeah, yeah. we love watching. Y'all watch the? Um, did you watch the pay per view over the weekend? We didn't get to. Um, I actually, I had every intention of watching it backstage while we we're at our concert in um, in Muskogee, but um, we were just so busy, like talking with the other artists and just having a good time. That I, I was, completely forgot to. I was so upset. I was so upset. I was hoping I, that I. I was hoping that Cena would retain his belt come the 17th champion and there's no conflict or anything else. He walk out of there, become a hall of famer and just going about his movie career. Yeah. And, um, my son was telling me he was just up in a major event that was up in Detroit uh -huh. and they were behind the scenes with a lot of the wrestlers. And oh. they said that they were upset the way they did. They did Cena Brock Lesnar come out towards the end of it. And yeah. just throw John around like a rag doll. And I just, I got upset that I'm a big fan of Cena's. Yeah. I am um, actually later on Saturday evening after the concert was out and we had, we were out eating with our friends and everything. Um, I looked up the results and there were a few things that I didn't, I didn't like about the card, but um, there were some really cool things. I was very excited about Bobby Lashley staying the champion. I feel like they need to build him a, him up as much as possible, you know, keep him going. So you don't like Goldberg, huh? Well, I, something I, against I, Bill Goldberg? No, I'm a huge Goldberg fan, but I didn't, where he doesn't perform as well anymore. Well, I guess so. I mean, we're 54 years old, dude. You know we're getting <laughs> old. I just don't know the feeling yet. Uh, Gold, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Goldberg, if you go back to the WCW era where he oh, was Oh, I used there, to watch him then. Oh man, he was awesome. And he was. he was he was really awesome. But there comes a time when you get to be a certain age. I've got a broken shoulder. I've got knee problems. I'm not getting out there at 54 and trying to become the world champion. I'm just not going to yeah. do it. I'm like the Undertaker. I'm done. I'm retired. Yeah. You, you, you know, you keep seeing Hulk Hogan come back after. I've got back replacement. I got knee replacement. I got elbow replacement, shoulder replacement, but there's just one more. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, um, it's so great to meet you guys. And really, um, I know that y'all are very busy. Thank you for stopping off and just having a little bit of time with us. It was great. And I wish y'all a lot of success and, uh, don't let this be your first time coming to see me, stay in Definitely. touch with me and let me know what's going on. We'll have you back on. Maybe if you're in a concert in the area, reach out to me. If you're in Chattanooga or Cleveland or even Utawal or, you know, throw it over Thorpe somewhere gotcha. in Alabama, just reach out and we'll come over and do a live interview with y'all. That'd be great. We get, love that. And I'll get you out there. Um, hold on just one second. Okay. Hey, you've been listening to the Chuck Bryant show here live on the Chuck Bryant show unplugged where we ask the real hard questions. These guys didn't sweat. They didn't even have to go get a tissue, but guess what? They got ready. So they must already knew what happened. And that, uh Oh, look, they moved the hair there a little bit. That must be a little toupee that he's got up there. I didn't want to say anything, but you know, Hey guys, <laughs> thank you so much for coming aboard. And, uh, you've been listening to the Chuck Bryant show. 
And uh, we'll be back with you. If you remember, oh, brother, I forgot something I normally do. Yeah. And thank you, Lord, for that. When we close out a video s- series with a gospel group, a pastor, or an author, I always like to close it in prayer. So okay. if y'all don't mind, would y'all say a prayer and closing us out for tonight? Sure. Yeah. Hey, which I'll one's going to do it? Which one's going to do it? All right. Let's go for it. Lord, thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for being so good. God, thank you for all the many opportunities and all the blessings you've provided our way. God, thank you for people like Brother Chuck here that allows us to be on his show, and he entrusts us to to be on his show and talk to his audience, God. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you're going to do. Please bless us about our week and the rest of our weekend. And thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for y'all. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want you to touch this ministry. Lord, I want you to touch these three brothers as they're getting started for their new campaign. Lord, I want you to bless them next year with 200 uh, interviews, 200 uh, concert appearances. Bless them to go to Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Nevada, wherever you want to send them, Lord. Send them there. They're blessed. They're highly anointed. And Lord, we just we thank you for having this opportunity to come on to the show tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Wouldn't amen. that be something to go and sing in Nevada at one of those cool. little bitty character, country churches out there? Be awesome. yeah. Be great. yeah, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube TV and I I just love that area out there. Do I want to go out there? Maybe to visit, but not when it's 121 degrees out there. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Good well, how you going, guys? We'll be right back. Hey, this is the Chuck Bryant Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Hey, if you, you like the program, let me know. Put some comments down at the bottom. Like it. Share it. Tell your friends about the Chuck Bryant Show. And if you're an uh, artist, get in touch with me and I'll get you in touch with my wife that handles all my schedules and stuff until next time. May God bless you. Share this video out. These guys would love it to get known through where, you know, maybe Hawaii, maybe Guam, you know, somewhere in the area where they can carry the gospel. Hey, that'd be a nice little trip. Would it not? Hey, listen, if we, if we get to go to Hawaii, uh, I think all of a sudden our wife's going to start going with us. Yeah. (laughs) That's going to be an expensive trip, especially with the babies. I can (laughs) see it now. All right, guys. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in tonight. God bless.